Morning. Well, it's a new month. Well, it's been a new month a couple of, for a few days. And uh, while in the scheme of things, there is no, there is no master plan per se, other than what I think of lying, you know, lying in bed at night. However, uh, as you know, those uh, who watch regularly, I'm uh, supposed to be going in the water at the end of September. But at the moment, if I go under in the water, I will quickly <laughs> go under the water because I don't have a, any stern gear in there. It's just a hole where the propeller and the shaft, etc. should be. So what with that and the uh, generator, which have all been sort of left to uh, while I've been doing inside stuff, uh, I really thought I'd better start having a look at that now because, uh, you know, I don't know how long it will take. I hope not two months, but uh, I don't know how long it will take. And also, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some snags and things will take longer than I expected. So uh, it's time to uh, put down the wood for a while and uh, go and look at some uh, proper engineering stuff. Well, I've just gone on a quick preliminary look in the uh, engine bay just to see, scope out, you know, what I need to order and things. And I'd say I'm a little bit crestfallen. Uh, alas, in some ways, not surprised. In fact, as, as I started, I was sort of in, my stomach was clenched because I kind of knew it. Anyway, long story short uh it seems that the uh the, the the mounting bed for the motor is the wrong height uh and uh this is despite me giving the manufacturer the you know dimensions and asking it to be the correct height however i it looks like they've just put as usual just put a standard standard engine bed in and mine needs to be a bit higher so you know th there are these these are the uh mounts that the uh, motor will go on which are adjustable but not adjustable for the amount i need uh so not the end of the world uh, at least huh, the engine bed is the engine you know the engine mounting bed is too low which is uh somewhat less less you know a nightmare than if it was too high <laughs> but uh we'll have to have a uh a uh, think about how to do this yeah. this is why i wanted to start this you know a good deal sooner than than you know <laughs> a few weeks before going in the water in case i snagged like this Right, well I've pulled myself together and uh, I've telephoned the boat builder and they're having a think about what to do. Uh, happily, the uh, installing motor is sort of the last, not the last, but it's, it's down the path of the things I've got to do here in the, uh, in the engine bay. I thought for you know, ease of work, I would work, my, work the way from the, the forward to the, to the back. As you can see, this is where the motor will go and this is the easiest place to stand. So it's going to be the last thing I uh, said to, uh, to put in anyway. But first of all, so what I'm going to turn my attention to is the generator. I've, uh, this has been sitting here since the boat arrived, the, uh, the, the boat builder put it, put it in place, didn't install it, but that's the thing, so, and I barely, barely, other than using a step stool to get in and out, I barely uh, looked at this, so uh, it's still quite, quite a bit of a, uh, a toy, so, opening it up, Dong. <laughs> So this is a, a Vitas uh, GLX uh, low speed uh, generator, GLX 6.5, and as you can see, it's uh, it's basically it's basically the engine that you could have in a boat. It's a big diesel engine with a uh, rather large alternator. And what I need to do, I need to uh, I need to hook up the exhaust system. It's raw water cooling. I need to hook up the raw water. There, I have bought a calorifier modification and I need to somehow in there uh, modify the so there's an outlet so I can put the uh, put the sort of the, the circuit to the calorifier in. I need to put a uh, anti for the raw water cooling, I need to put an anti siphon uh, thing in which will unfortunately need to cut some more holes of that panel there, it will be a bit of a pain. I need to uh, hook up the electric, it's not shouldn't be too bad, that's the wire going through there. And on that, oh, and of course, oh okay, yeah, and some fuel. I need to run the uh, the diesel line up there into the connections in the tank. So all in all, uh, quite a bit to do. I don't know how you know how much I'm going to be able to this, this film this. Not only is it difficult to film in this little space, uh, you know, I'm not a mechanic, so there's no point in me saying you know, what. <laughs> how-to video uh, but I will try and get some uh, little bit of shots of what I'm doing as I go along. 
Well, the first thing I'm going to tackle is try to removing, try to move this panel here so I can drill uh, two more, three more holes actually, uh, because I need to run two pipes out for the air vent and uh, three pipes out for the chlorophyre connection. So this panel, I can see <laughs> there are some screws here. I can unfortunately, I can see some screws right down at the bottom, and you know, <laughs> as you <laughs> got much room to work with. I'm going to be putting my uh, my flexible uh, little socket set to the test here, I can see. I've always wished that uh, physically I'm uh, not quite as much of a stick insect as I am. However, there are certain times, occasionally, like this, that being on the uh, slim side has its advantages, because otherwise any large I wouldn't uh, be able to get <laughs> get my hand down there. That's going to be a joy to put back. Well, inevitably it's raining the moment, so uh, any hole cutting is going to wait till it's not. So I'll just move on. Well, it's turning into one of those weeks. So when I was checking out the engine uh, mounts, I uh, also looked at what's, what hoses I'm going to need to uh, do some connections. And I ordered them last night and uh, just realised to my horror that uh, I was having problems with the credit card and I put it in a few... Anyway, long story short, the shipping address, which was Debdale, that has got transposed to London. And uh, so it's now uh, off off to London. I just phoned them up and it had gone, the parcel had gone 15 minutes ago. And so I won't be able to get the hoses I need to cook the engine up till I uh, go back to London. Well, the next thing to do is to add the chlorify connection, which is this little... Little, little, but as usual, very expensive thing to the engine. And there are pages and pages of quite complex instructions because there's quite a bit of undoing to do as well. This, uh, this pipe here has to be taken out and replaced with that. Hopefully done. I won't know until it's in the water and I've turned it on. But my goodness, I'd say this, while quite comprehensive, was still massively oversimplified, and there were was still massively oversimplified, and there were just some steps that weren't even in there. And uh, I managed to thread one of the uh, bolts happily, just the one that puts one of one or two bolts that puts the bracket uh, for the alternator tensioner. Uh, and I put a new bolt in, which uh, Chris kindly uh, kindly gave me. So hopefully that's okay. But bloody hell, I'm glad that's uh, over. Well, fingers crossed. I hope it is. Morning, and it is morning despite they've got the light on. It's uh, so grim weather out there. Uh, so I can't really do much more on the chlorifier connections until I get some pipe. So the next thing I'm going to do, uh, and it's 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 what I should do early on anyway because. Uh, where, where this where this goes? I'm going to say this. I'm going to connect the uh, exhaust up to the to the generator, and given the uh, exhaust pipe is quite uh, stiff and uh, don't have much uh, latchy where it goes, that will sort of then then you know determine where everything else. Yeah, when I say that, it's not like I haven't thought about where they are going to go, but you know what I mean. It's it'd be good to get that in. Uh, yes. Oh, and the other thing. Separate note. <laughs> admin note, as it were. Uh, I just uh, saw some comments from uh, last week uh, about the sound quality being all over the place and uh, uh, a genuine apology for that. It, it's not that I, I, I know that sometimes this happens, but uh, as I've said, as it says in, in the blurb, I'm doing all this on an absolutely ancient iPhone, which is very much on its last legs. And that includes all the editing and everything. And there's no automatic sound volume, you know, levelization or anything. I do try, I spend a lot of time trying to make sure the sound's okay. But with the old microphones, especially depending on where, which attitude you have, the camera and what the surroundings are, it can, uh, uh, the, you know, the sound quality varies quite a lot. And of course, I listen to it before I upload it, but because I'm listening to, my, to on my phone, 
it doesn't the the sort of imperfections are masked themselves. So it, it's I'm kind of unaware until I get comments that the uh, the sound quality is rubbish. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, and yet the the it's very reasonable. I will get a new phone, but the. I'm just very reluctant to do that right now because this thing gets so bashed up during, uh, you know, during filming and uh, general, and not even just filming, just general use when I'm building. So I really don't treat to treat myself to a new phone just to get it wrecked in the next, uh, you know, the next couple of months. So well, although I would have liked a Keel Cooled generator, when I bought this uh, Vitas thing, the only option available, I believe there is a Keel Cooled version now, but the, at the time the only option was a raw water cooled. So uh, there is a, uh, basically it goes through a gas water separator and then there are two, uh, one, one for the uh, dry exhaust and then there's one below the water line for the wet exhaust. And that is what I need to get hooked up via a number of separators and yeah I said <laughs> it's so dark in here you're not going to be able to see anything anyway. Well I'm not having the most joyful afternoon I have to say. Uh, I always knew this was going to be a nightmare the exhaust part and in particular the drain. So there's a gas water separator here and uh, it's supposed to. I, you know, I have, I'm trying to diligently follow the instructions of the installation which are written very much for <laughs> seagoing vessels certainly vessels with keels and things uh, and not cramped boats uh, narrow boats anyway it's it's proving a challenge and to to make it even make it much more difficult and i've mentioned this in the past uh, i carefully worked out where where the exit and the water inlet should be and uh, did did that on CAD and sent that to the boat builder and uh, because of Covid I didn't get to visit the boat uh, well I only got sorry only visited once at which point this, this wasn't uh, these weren't in and to my surprise when the boat arrived uh, last year they were in re not even remotely the uh, right places that uh, I'd asked for and when I inquired with the builder of why this was he said that they didn't fit where uh, where I'd suggested which I don't agree with and even more so, he, sa he said that the uh, UK manager of Avitas happened to be in the boat yard uh, at that point and he'd suggested to put them here. And they're not right. And so it's causing me great angst. And then just when I'm trying to get things just about sorted out, trying to get, trying to keep to the minimum, you know, the minimum bend radius for the exhaust pipe. And uh, then there's the, uh, the seacock, as it were. Uh, and just when, I th and also I've, I bought a elbow to help it w which which ideally would help with the angle to keep you know to go here however of course when you when you get to the point where this is uh, you know this is this is screwed home enough and this is screwed home enough this thing's a points in the total wrong direction and even forgetting this annoyingly this when it's fully home on the uh, on on the, the threaded stub that's been welded in this this does that so you can't close the thing now i guess i can cut this down or bend it or something to uh, to make that work but it's again it's just a bit more annoyance well I'll sort out the handle uh, a bit later but uh, that's in and as you can see I've been quite liberal with the thread sealant that's <laughs> that is probably the, <laughs> these are the three weakest points you know uh, these are going to be underwater so god hope this uh, hope this I tightened as much as I could with the rather large uh, Stilson wrench so uh, but also on the uh, more happily, I, I didn't think it was going to happen. I just tried the uh, elbow, and uh, as you can see, it managed to, when it's it's sort of fully home was just about uh, where it needed to be, and that's going to make life a lot easier because that's just about you can. See, I might I might actually <laughs> I bought this specially for it, but I might take that off because uh, I'm not sure it's helping. But uh, I think I should be able to just get this in now. Well, happily, I've managed to bend that. So it's now in, and as you can see with your own eyes, I've cut up the hose pipe and it's uh, all installed. So it comes out of the generator, goes into this, uh, what's called the water lock, and the main function of that is just so it catches, there's enough, it collects any uh, water, etc. that runs back down. And then it comes up and uh, there's the uh, gas water separator that I was uh, mentioning and that's mounted up as uh, high as I can get it but not so high that uh, it's too high and then that separates so the water then flows out 
down there and through our seacock and the gas uh, out through the, uh, through the side. And as you can see, I've managed to get it so it's they both slope on a down downward leg without any uh, any lumps in. So that's uh, it's come out better than I hoped actually. And as you can see, I didn't use that uh, damn uh, damn corner piece in the end. So that's uh, twenty pounds wasted. Well, I said last week that uh, there probably wouldn't be a video this week. However, as you were able to see, <laughs> there is. Uh, I've didn't think I'd be able to be taking much footage of doing this, but uh, I have, and that combined with uh, quite a bit of waffle, which I know some of you don't like, but uh, hey, uh, I have enough for video, so I will edit this up and uh, upload it. It does mean, I'm not entirely sure whether it means that when I come back from, I haven't come back, gone to, I haven't gone away as you can see, uh, but uh, I'm not sure we'll have enough time to uh, get another week's But Anyway, I will uh, be back in your YouTube feed uh, as soon as possible. In the meantime, thanks for watching and uh, catch you later.